If your ESC runs BLHeli S, then I don't blame you if you've been feeling a little bit like a second-class citizen lately. It seems like all the cool new features go into BLHeli 32, and BLHeli S is just left out. And I, I mean features that improve the flight performance of your quadcopter, like uh, bi-directional D-shot so you can do RPM filtering. Yeah, BLHeli S didn't support that for a long time. Or features like, uh, like this. Huh? Yeah, the ability to play music or sounds when you first plug in. Okay, it's not going to make your quad fly better, but it sure is cool to be able to personalize it in that way. Today, I'm going to show you a firmware for BLHeli S that lets you get in on many of these features. And if you've seen previous videos I've done about JESC and Jazz Maverick, no, this is not them. I've got another recommendation today, and I'm going to tell you why today Blue Jay is the firmware that you want to be running on your BLHeli SCSC, and there is a newer, even easier way to flash Blue Jay and a couple other firmwares. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. Before I tell you why BlueJay is the firmware that I recommend you put on your BLHeli S ESCs today, I just want to acknowledge the work done previously by Joe Lucid uh, for with the JESC firmware and Jazz Maverick on the Jazz Maverick firmware. Um, all of these people have contributed to the open source uh, expansion of the BLHeli S code, and many of these firmwares wouldn't be here without the work they've done. There's nothing wrong with these firmwares per se. But JESC firmware, uh, it costs money. That's fine. Joe Lucid wanted to charge money for his work. I don't begrudge him that. But there is a firmware that basically does the same thing for free. So most people will probably choose that. Especially because when you buy a JESC license, if your ESC dies, you don't get that money back. And a lot of people are annoyed by that. That's actually always how it's worked. You just pay the license when you first buy the ESC. They don't give you it back when it dies. But a lot of people are a little bit annoyed about that. So, uh, and as far as Jazz Maverick goes, well, the last update was August 2020. It's a little bit out of date. So the firmware we're looking at here is called Blue Jay. And yes, you can flash it with a standalone app if you prefer to download the app to your hard drive. But even cooler, there is a browser-based flasher, and a lot of people are going to like that and find it more convenient than downloading an app to their hard drive. The URL is esc-configurator.com, and there's a link to that down in the video description, as you would expect. So in order to use this, we're just going to plug USB into the flight controller and plug in a battery to power up the ESC. And then here in the browser, I'm going to hit open port selection, and I'm going to choose the COM port of the flight controller. The very first time you do this, Chrome is going to ask you for permissions to access the COM ports. And then once you do that, you don't have to do that again. Uh, by the way, this is, you'll need a Chrome-based browser, which ba basically all of them are today, but yeah. So then we'll hit connect, and we will hit connect. And now we are connected to the ESC. And the next thing I'll do is hit read setup down here in the lower right. Now, if you've used BLHeli S configurator before, then this all looks very familiar. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised to learn it's all based on the same code because it's all open source. Many of the things in here are going to be familiar to you. Uh, you can set whether the motor's reversed. You can change the PPM min and max throttle. If you're using D-Shot, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and over here on the left, we've got options like startup power, temperature protection, the standard ESC-based options that you're used to seeing. But if we flash the Blue Jay firmware, we're going to see some extra stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Down here in the lower right, I'm going to hit flash all. And the firmware I'm going to flash is going to be Blue Jay. For ESC, just leave this at whatever it is, GH30. Don't change that because you'll mess up your ESC. And for version, I suppose I'm going to pick the latest version. I don't know what ERPM test is, but I don't think I want test firmware. And then we got the first option that we can select that's new with this firmware, the PWM frequency. Now, on BLHeli 32 ESCs, you don't have to flash different firmware to change the motor PWM frequency. You can just change it in software. But on these BLHeli S ESCs, they don't have enough space for the code. Uh, how do you choose which PWM frequency you want? For very small quads like toothpicks and smaller down to 65 millimeter tiny whoops, generally the higher the PWM frequency, the longer the flight time you're going to get. And this is 
much, much more true for like 65 millimeter tiny whoops than it is for like three inch toothpicks. In fact, maybe even at the three inch size, it doesn't make sense anymore. Um, this is a, this is a three inch. It's not really a toothpick though. So maybe I'm gonna pick the middle 48 uh, kilohertz. The higher the frequency, the smoother the motors are gonna be in general. So some people would argue that for larger like freestyle quads, you would want the 96 kilohertz PWM frequency. The problem with that is that the higher P PWM frequencies also significantly re reduce braking torque and they can make the quad handle worse. So for larger freestyle quads, like five inches and up, you probably are gonna to wanna to pick 24 and uh, for tiny whoops and so forth, you're definitely gonna pick 96 and somewhere around three inches, maybe you'd pick 48. Uh, yeah, that's what you're gonna go for. So then I'm just gonna hit flash and it's gonna go flash all of those ESCs. After you're done flashing, you're gonna see that there's some new options here that are unique to the Blue Jay firmware. And we're gonna go through a couple of those, what they mean and how to tune them. But the number one thing you've got is not an option, it's just there. And that is access to bi-directional D-Shot. So here in Betaflight, we can go to the, well, I'm in the motors tab in Betaflight Configurator 10.8, which is the newest version uh, that has just come out. Uh, they've moved the D-Shot settings to the motors tab. They used to be in the configuration tab. If you're on configurator 10.7, they're gonna be in the configuration tab. Um, we can enable bi-directional D-Shot and save and reboot. And then here in the motors tab, we can see 0% errors which with BLLES, we would now see 100% errors because it doesn't support bi-directional D-Shot. We can now uh, use RPM filtering here in the PID tuning tab. We can go to the filter settings and you can see that the gyro RPM filter is enabled. And that's fantastic. That is, everybody should do that. Everybody should do that. And in fact, once you've done that, you should also go ahead and turn off the gyro low, gyro one low pass, leave gyro low pass two and leave the D term that once you enable the gyro RPM filter, it's almost always safe to just go ahead and disable that and uh, you know, get some, get your quadcopter flying just a little bit better. But this isn't a tuning guide. This is about the ESC. Let's continue. Another feature that you're really gonna enjoy is the ability to customize the startup sound to make that be a song or sound, something that you personalize for yourself. Why would you wanna hear the standard startup music every time you plug in? <sighs> How boring. You're gonna access that through the melody editor here and you can make your own melodies. The format is ringtone text transfer language or RTTL. Uh, and there's documentation online about how to create RTTL files, but there's actually also just a library of pre-made ones that you can pick. Uh, for example, how about the Rick and Morty theme? We can even play it to, uh, yeah, there you go. We can even play it to sound, hear what it sounds like. Uh, and when we're ready to go, we will accept each one. Is that how you do it? I believe so. Yes, accept it and then write melodies. <laughs> Shut up. You know that's the coolest thing you've ever freaking heard. <laughs> yeah, finally, my micro quads can have the same startup tone as my big quad. Like I always wanted. Nice. That's, that's what we need from life. Now let's get to the serious stuff. Uh, these options over here and the default options work fine. That's why they're the defaults. If this stuff kind of breaks your brain a little bit, that just fly the defaults and have fun and enjoy your, your new startup tones and your bi-directional D-Shot RPM filtering. Now here in the Blue Jay firmware, we've got two parameters that relate to startup power. One is the minimum and one is the maximum. And the way it works is that the ESC will start sort of kicking the motor with the minimum startup power. And if the motor doesn't begin to spin smoothly and back EMF is detected, then it will slowly increase how hard it kicks the motor until it reaches the maximum. And at that point, hopefully the motor will be spinning. And the problem is that if that electrical pulse, that initial blind kick is too weak, the motor won't begin to spin. It's not great, but it's not the worst thing in the world. If that pulse is too strong, the motor can be damaged. For example, what if the motor isn't spinning because it's blocked by a branch? And you're like, ah, start spinning, you son of a, ah, you just burned a motor. So what the ESC is gonna do is it's gonna start with the minimum startup power. And if the motor doesn't begin to spin, it's gonna ramp up to the maximum startup power. 
So the maximum startup power needs to be low enough or that it doesn't let the motor fry. And I don't know how you tune that value. Just raise it until you fry a motor. I really don't. So we're just going to leave that at the default. But the minimum startup power we can actually tune to try and make it be just high enough to get the motor going while, uh, while not sort of over kicking the motor, if you will. Moving on down the parameters, we've got motor timing. Uh, and the short, value, short version is that you can set this timing from medium high to high, which decreases the odds of a desync, but can also make the motors run hotter and less efficient. It can also make a little bit more power sometimes. A lot of racers prefer to run at high timing, uh, the highest possible timing. There isn't really a compelling reason to turn the timing down that I can think of. Like really big low KV motors, you might want to turn the timing down, I suppose, because they're spinning so slowly now. But the default timing is probably fine. If you want a little bit more power at the expense of efficiency, turn it up to high. DMAG compensation, uh, that is a safety setting where if the ESC thinks that the motor has desynced, it will go into a mode where it does what's called blind commutation, where it just tries to commute the motor, commutate the motor without detecting zero crossings. And low is a fine value for most people. If you have a particularly desync prone quadcopter, you can set it to high and it may fix your desyncs. Uh, and basically nobody should set it to off, probably. Beep strength is how loud the motors beep. If you turn this up, you do risk heating your motors up if the, the left beeping too long, but they will beep louder. Uh, beacon strength is when the ESC is powered down for too long and it begins to beep because it thinks you've lost it. That's how strong that will be. Uh, and, uh, oh, we missed RPM power protection. That is how hard the ESC will try to accelerate the motor when it's already spinning. So if you're in a situation where the motor is spinning and then suddenly it needs to accelerate, by turning this up, it will accelerate harder, but there'll be a greater chance of a desync or a fried motor. So you definitely could try turning this up if you want more responsive motors, but you have much higher risk of frying something. And then the last setting we're gonna talk about is dithering, which should basically always be on unless you're using 24 kPWM frequency, because without it, your motor resolution will be extremely low. And that's gonna bring us to the end of the video. Uh, I am putting Blue Jay on all of my quads with BL Heli S ESCs to gain access to bi-directional D-shot, RPM filtering, and yes, the Mario power-up sound, which is more important to me than you know. If you're interested in tweaking some of those advanced options, that's cool. But even if you're not, I suggest you flash this. And that is the advice that I, uh, not just me, but I talked to a whole bunch of other people I know who, a lot of people who fly micro quads with BL Heli SCSCs, and this is the firmware they're all using too. Sorry, JESC, Jazz Maverick, etc. This just seems to be where people are at. So there's links in the video description to all the stuff if you're interested. And uh, yeah, oh, right. If you value content like this, I have a Patreon page. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. You're totally in charge of how much you decide to spend. Um, it helps support me every month, helps me pay the bills, uh, and helps me keep making content like this. But don't worry, content like this will always be available for free. So if today's not the day where you feel like I've earned it, that's fine, keep watching, and hopefully that day will come. But if that today is that day, down in the video description is a link to patreon.com, as well as some other ways you can support me. Thanks for watching, happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.